So you want to create effects for your games? Well, let me tell you about a sequencer. Okay, okay, so what the heck is Sequencer? Well, Sequencer is a module for Foundry VTT that's going to allow you to create script macros to produce effects, animations, and sound. All without an extensive knowledge for coding. So instead of some gigabrain block of code, you're going to simply assemble a string of sections made out of methods to create effects. Oh, but Eskimo, isn't this still a complex task? Well, yeah, kind of. So to help you start out, I'm going to guide you through making three basic sequencer macros. So put your big kid pants on, because we're about to pump. So we're going to need to install a few modules before we can get truly started here. Firstly, we're going to need to install sequencer. Duh. Then you're going to need some sort of visual effects to add to your game. So it could be either images or video files you have, it could be links to images on the web, or it could be the JB2A module. Hmm? I would say it's the shiny gold standard for visual effects in Foundry. The free version can be found in the module library. But I'll provide a link down below to their Patreon so you can get your hands on that sexy complete edition, which is going to have much more visual effects options for you to choose from. And last, we're going to install the warp gate module. It does a lot of things, but we're concerned with its ability to create a crosshair, which is going to let us create ground targeted effects. Okay, it's macro time. First, drag a token onto the canvas. Second, click an empty spot on the hotbar to create a new macro. Make sure the type is set to rip. Now let's type out our sequence. So get ready to pause and follow along with me. We're going to begin by typing new sequence to begin the sequence. And now we're going to do our effect sections with dot effect and dot file. Pull out the file path of the effect you want to use. Or if you're using JB2A, go to the Show Sequencer Database button, click that, and search for the effect you want. This will do. Click Copy and paste it in. Now we're going to define where we want the effect to play. So we're going to use at location, and we want the effect to be on top of the token, so we'll put token. Next, we're going to define the size of the effect with dot scale. And then we're going to set the duration of the effect. So dot duration and type out how many milliseconds you want it to play for. Or if you want the effect to persist until you delete it, you're going to type dot persist. And now finish off with dot play. Make sure your token is selected and execute. Wow, you did it. Of course, we can do much more to this effect. We can make it fade in, we can make it scale in, we can make it move side to side, and we accomplish all of that by adding more methods to the section. I'll provide a link to the sequencer website so you can find a full list of the methods available to manipulate the effect. If you want more effects to play, then simply add more effects sections to the sequence, all with different file paths. Great, now we're really cooking. And if you want to delete any of those persisting effects, go over to the sequencer effect viewer, and then simply X out any effect that you want, or end all effects. So what about the projectile effect, where the effect originates from your token and shoots out to another token? So let's bring out another token to act as our guinea pig. Let's open up a new macro, make sure it's set the script. And before we type out our sequence, let's define our target. So let target equal array from game users target, bracket zero, bracket. Now our target's defined as whatever the first thing that you have targeted. So let's start our sequence. 
add an effect section, grab a file, put at location to be the token. This is where it's going to originate from. And then dot stretch to target. Finish with dot play. Target the other token. Make sure your token is selected and execute. Now we're blasting. But what if we had multiple targets? Well, simply change target to targets, erase the z bracket zero bracket, and now put this little number before the sequence, and then after the sequence, finish it with a curly bracket and a parentheses, and now the sequence is going to repeat for every target. So what about a ground targeted effect, like a fireball? Well, for that, we're going to need to use the warp gate module. So let's open up another new macro. And before we do anything, we're going to define the config for the crosshair. So type this out. It's a long one, so pause. But basically, most of this stuff is cosmetic. What's truly important is going to be the interval. So the interval is going to define how your crosshair snaps to the grid. So if set to negative one, it'll snap to the center of every square. If set to zero, it won't snap at all. If set to one, it'll snap at every grid intersection. And if set to two, it'll snap to every center, every edge, and every grid intersection. Now that we have the config done, let's define the position as let position equal await warp gate dot crosshair dot show config. And now we can start our sequence. So for the effect section, we're going to go dot effect, pull the file of the fireball beam at location token stretch to position another effect section we're gonna grab the fireball explosion animation and we're gonna set that location to be at the position and we're gonna delay that for 2100 milliseconds now end the sequence with dot play select your token execute we're gonna get this sick crosshair and click You've done it. You have made an effect. You have made three effects. And you're going to make many more in the future. This is only the beginning of your journey. So have fun with it. And if you want to see other people's macros, you can head over to the JB2A Discord server or to my Discord server. And there are places where people have shared their macros. And you can take them and learn from them and see what cool things they have done. I share all my macros on Discord, and it's the best place for you to come in and ask me questions or even leave me suggestions for future videos, because I plan on making much more of these. So until next time.